at Jefferson Gun Club, Sherelle Hubbard. Hey. Wave three news. Ain't you broke it? Today they <laughs> <laughs> Remember, security reserves the right to take a peek inside and stick their hands in your handbag. Do you know when you're riding past, you look inside and say, what's going on in there? Well, a pregnant woman is dead, two others critically injured. Those two people were transported to local hospitals. The standoff that took place in this house for hours is over. A group of investors, including developer Gil Holland, plans to pump $22 million into Portland. For this year, they wanted to do something a little extra special. The light show has just started. Take a look behind me. If you're targeting Kentucky voters, you better be prepared to talk about gun rights. Shannon, for years there was this unsightly scaffolding here that pedestrians had to walk under. As you can see now, it's gone. Little chilly, but still a lot of fun if you are into arts, music, and entertainment. Then Scott, I spoke with Bardstown principal Chris Pickett's lawyer today. He says it's his client's face that's been plastered on the news the last few days but he says his client hasn't done anything wrong and this is all just a big misunderstanding. Who stole a $25,000 batch of rare bourbon? That's the million dollar question that's being echoed around the world. Everybody knows about it. It's been in you know, the Wall Street Journal, the New York Times, CNN. I mean, it's been all over the world. And in the bourbon capital of the world, Bardstown, Kentucky, inquiring minds want to know. It's been all the rage. It's the, it's the holy grail of, of rare bourbons. If you can get a hold of a bottle, everybody's your buddy. Bardstown High School principal Chris Pickett has found himself in the center of the controversy. This surveillance footage came from an Elizabethtown liquor store whose owner claims Pickett tried to sell him cases of Pappy Van Winkle 20-year bourbon. Pickett's attorney says they've got it all wrong. And he told him that he was a collector and had uh, 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 several bottles of Pappy and certainly would like to buy some more. Instead of offering to sell the bourbon, Pickett's lawyer says he wanted to buy some. He says his client had nothing to do with the heist of more than 200 bottles of the bourbon from the Buffalo Trace Distillery in Frankfurt on October 15th. He insists the store is the one looking to get publicity from its now viral surveillance video. It may be, maybe they're 15 minutes of fame, maybe they're trying to call favor with the police department. Sheriff Pat Melton says he's confident that they'll catch the bandit who made off with the booze soon enough. It's a small community. It's an extremely rare bourbon. Uh, it's a very high profile case. And if somebody tries to fence it or sell it locally, somebody's going to know about it. Pickett's attorney says they will meet with police tomorrow to answer any questions. Law enforcement says they are following up on several leads and are also considering the prospect that the theft could have been an inside job. The priced 20-year bottles retail for $120, but can be sold for nearly 10 times that price in an auction. Scott? Not happy with the council and not happy with the fact that Mayor Fisher announced today that he'll sign it when it comes across his desk. Stores say a nice chunk of their sales happen between two and four in the morning. Can I help who's next? Cashier Carissa May says she'll be back on the job market shortly. Ma'am, this calls me from going job hunting. I've been here for five years. Never had to worry about nothing. Six days a week, 36 to 40 hours a week. She works at the liquor store on 27th and Broadway, but they'll be downsizing soon. They will have to cut back on workers because they'll have to close earlier. The biggest proponent of that change says it'll help stop violence. There's a lot of crime that goes on nearby. Uh, within a quarter mile on the premises and the parking lot. And although some of her constituents don't agree. Uh, I don't know about curbing crime. I believe if crime is going to happen, it's going to happen with or without liquor. The mayor says he'll sign it. Uh, happy to follow the will of the council there. Liquor store owner Sandra Fant says he hasn't thought it through. You know, the city's going to lose revenue between me and the Thorntons and the gas stations that can't sell them two hours when you add it all up. It's a lot of revenue. She did an open records request of the city 
Lee and says she found that stores like hers aren't the problem. She says only 30 citations were issued countywide for liquor stores and convenience stores compared to 160 for bars and nightclubs this year. And Fant says instead of solving a problem, the council may be creating a bigger, more deadly one. So you're going to get drunk driving, you're going to get more DUS and more possibly killers from hitting and running where people ain't seeing they toe up leaving the club. Carissa May says the council who voted 15 to 7 to eliminate extended hours now should extend a helping hand for all the workers who will be out of work. They ain't thinking about the people. Do it. They must got a job for me beside them. That ban is set to go into effect on December the 1st. Sherell Hubbard, Wave 3 News. I do have a big turnout. Everybody's just out here enjoying the festivities, enjoying the food. I've had a corn dog and some deep fried Kool-Aid myself, and everyone's really having. Is everybody having a good time? Yeah. The Kentucky State Fair. The Kentucky State Fair. Where you can be serenaded by a 10 foot man, dance a country jig, meet all your favorite Wave 3 personalities, hey, how you doing? and pretend to be one. 83 degrees, partly sunny, isolated showers. There's a picture of downtown Louisville. There's no place like it in the world. The best part of the fair so far has been this massive turkey leg. And it's like really salty, but it's really nice. We don't get anything like that in England. Everything's quite bland there, really. Folks come for the rides. I want to go ride the Ferris wheel. And a Kentucky State Fair wouldn't be a fair without a Chicago-style hot dog. And, of course, a world-famous corn dog. The cool drinks keep flowing and all the food comes deep fried. The fried? The deep fried Girl Scout cookies. Yeah, I was just about to say the that. That is unbelievable. Deep fried Kool-Aid is a winner and no counting calories if you want a Krispy Kreme burger. It's like two donuts yes. and then a burger and... I'm going to scrub that before I leave. <laughs> well, in case you did not make it out to the Kentucky State Fair today, no need to worry. It'll be here until Sunday the 25th. Live at the Kentucky State Fair, Sherelle Hubbard, Wave 3 News. All right.